Hello all, uh, happy Wednesday. I'm here with Momo. I'm pre-recording this quite late because if you were watching the Twitch stream last night, we had to go pick him up from the vet. He was in, yeah, he was in there having a, uh, a CT scan. Um, and, uh, he has no polyps. He has no tumors. They don't think they don't see any, um, evidence of a fungus. Um, they think he just has chronic rhinos, rhinosinusitis. So we need to change his litter and we need to make him a very pampered kitty with, um, uh, humidifiers and HEPA air filters and all that stuff. And, um, yeah, as my husband put it, we, they, they flushed his nasal passages out so he could breathe better. Yay, moo moo. Um, and as my husband put it, um, we spent, uh, 2,700 bucks to blow a cat's nose. So if, if you were <laughs> considering becoming a patron, please do it now. Information will be at the end of the video. Um, if he has to have any more, I'm going to have to do a GoFundMe because man, like poor Momo. Um, but I, I was quite happy, you know, whenever, whenever somebody mentions cancer, uh, you realize it's a very slow, it's a very low, low chance. Um, they brought it up saying they don't think it's cancer because, um, of the amount of time he's, he's been snotty. Um, but, uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's a little whacked out. He, he does not like being away from his family. Uh, but he's doing okay. Apparently he didn't like them touching his feet, which surprised me. But yeah, Momo's, Momo's okay. We're, it's just gonna, it's, it's just gonna be, a, he's a sensitive kitty. Right, Momo? Anybody this, like anybody this soft needs to be treated with softness. Right, buddy? Yeah. But uh, that's not what I wanted to talk about today. I wanted to talk about the utterly brutal uh, reception Anthem is getting. And I wanted to do this because I did talk about the VIP weekend and, um, you know, Bioware is one of these companies that it, how do I put this? Bioware started out as you were a big nerd if you played like isometric RPGs. There, there was a point where you know, the fan base for that was overwhelmingly male uh, because it, it was sort of based on Dungeons and Dragons. Well, it was exactly based on Dungeons and Dragons. They had the license and then they were afraid they're going to lose it. So, oh, they did lose it. And that's why they developed Dragon Age. It was a Star Wars license they were afraid they were going to lose. But, uh, you know, those games became known for their stories. And so this sort of far more diverse player base came into it and the the cool thing about talking to Bioware fans is you can meet somebody and and you know if you look in the whole identity politics box you and the other person could be absolutely no more different but you love the same characters you made the same choices and all of a sudden it feels like you've known this person for like your entire adult life and you think they're awesome and you immediately have something in common or even if you know you didn't make the same choices you can talk to them about because you know the characters and you like the character you just didn't make the same choices or in the case of dragon age inquisition you couldn't because you were playing the fake canary i spent oh my god like a year and a half looking forward to playing a Kunari, meaning you were going to have to play as a follower of the Kun. I looked Mike Laidlaw in the eye and I said, that is a Kunari, not a Tal Vashoth. Okay, Momo's mad. He's heard this too many times. Uh, because it, it was a, 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 a magic user, but not a, not a Cerebus. It didn't have the lip sewn shut or anything like that. I'm like, that's different. Of course, no, it wasn't. It wasn't a follower of the Kun. It was just a Tal Vashoth mercenary. So it was basically just like another character only with horns and shitty romance options. And it was so disappointing that the one new sort of class experience in Dragon Age Inquisition was so limited. And I, I don't know. Dr Dragon, you guys know, other than the Solus storyline... And, um, a few other things I, I would have preferred that like Krem 
was a romance option. Creme was more interesting than some of the options that we were given. Uh, Cassandra, I really liked. Um, but unfortunately, I, I didn't play the character, the characters of the type that Cassandra would be interested in. Um, and uh, the, the Cullen storyline was great. Like, even though I was really not thrilled with Inquisition because it was too much like Skyrim, there, there were still those story basics. There were still moments where I can go, okay, that, that's legitimately good. Then we got to Mass Effect Andromeda, and I didn't even freaking finish it. And the point where I rage quit, I think I talked about this before, I rage quit on Mass Effect Andromeda when a Krogan was lecturing me about the environment. I don't play Bioware games to interact with assimilated aliens. I want those very foreign feeling cultures. You know, the great thing about the Cunari is they were basically a mix of Sparta and the Ottoman Empire. And, you know, the Krogans are what happens when you give basically an... Uh, Bronze Age bordering on Iron Age civilization nuclear weapons. They destroy everything. And the the sheer broadness of, of the cultural diversity in a Bioware game was what made it fun. It was what made it great. It was what made you want to play it again and again and again and again, even if the combat was clunky, even if the facial animations were so bad that it, every time they smiled, they looked like they were taking a dump. Um, as as some characters did in, in Dragon Age Origin, uh, Origins. Um, you know, and after the, sh the incredible disappointment of Andromeda, and I know some people really liked Andromeda, sometimes because it was their first Mass Effect game, sometimes it was because they liked the colony building elements, which I never even got to because I couldn't deal with the politically correct environmentalist Krogans. Like the Krogan sensitivity training stuff that you encounter, it, it just, it broke my heart. That's not what I want from Krogans. Like, it's not the real world. And it just felt so damn colonial that here were humans destroying other cultures and make everybody act like them. It's like, what? Bioware of all places is force feeding me a colonialist framework. Cannot believe this. Um, but yeah, so then we get Anthem, which every single review says the same thing. The core gameplay is all right. It doesn't do anything better than Destiny or The Division, and the story is not good, and the characters are not memorable. So basically, Bioware made a game that wasn't a Bioware game. It's not going to appeal to its existing fan base. It's New Coke. For people too young to know about New Coke, um, Coke decided they wanted more shelf space, so they brought out New Coke because the, the brand uh, branding wisdom at the time was you have to have new products, new products, because people want new, new, new. So they changed the Coca-Cola formulation and came out with New Coke. And people lost it. It was a disaster. Anthem is the new Coke of Bioware. The world was finally catching up to Bioware. And I know I've said this before. People finally were appreciating what these, you know, massive story-driven RPGs had to offer. Because they came into it through The Witcher and was like, wow, what else you got, gaming? Finally getting to that point. Finally getting some respect. And they make a shitty Destiny clone. Like... My, my big concern, based on the advanced stuff, was that people weren't going to be able to immerse with all these assholes bouncing around with stupid, you know, Kakasaurus 69 screen name o over their head. Like, you can't. You can't immerse when that's going on. That's why a lot of the, like, it's more military because those sort of call signs match that experience, like Halo, it's fine. Call of Duty, it's fine because that's just a call sign. Like it works with the world. When you've got what's going on in, in Anthem or Mass Effect or, you know, well, even Mass Effect was military, it was better. But Dragon Age, no, that wouldn't work. And Anthem, if anybody remembers it in five years, will be taught now, I can say this with certainty because I may include it in my lectures for, for colleges about what, how not, how not 
to conceive, market, roll out, beta, and launch a game. Because it's a pretty game. Like the, the monster designs and stuff like that are amazing. Not terribly original, but very slick looking. But from the jump, it's a new IP. You need to make people excited about it. You need to present the world. You need to let people know what this is. When they were doing the advanced marketing on Dragon Age, they actually had you go in and you had the you had one of their community guys doing a speech about how you were Grey Wardens. Go forth. And it was the initiation quest um, locked off. And if you completed it in 45 minutes, that you got to put on the thing and, and they took a picture and it was a whole thing. It was cool. It it made you kind of understand, oh, this is about Grey Wardens. This is what the game is about. I, I get it. Like, it left you with something. Um, even though it really had nothing to do with the rest of the game, it introduced you to Duncan and, you know, all those characters that end up dying in the Grey Warden initiation. Um, Mass Effect, similarly, Mass Effect actually had a, a playable demo that you could just go through. The original one, um, they actually had the ability for you to bring your own headphones because they were really showing off the sound. Like, it, it was touchable. It was knowable. None of that for Anthem. Why? Because it was janky as, you know what. Um, and then, you know, okay, so we we see a little movie, one e 3 Okay, great. So the second E3, we're going to see some gameplay, right? No, we got half an hour of talking. We got a panel discussion. And that was when a lot of us went, uh-oh, this is filling space. And you only fill space when you got really nothing to show. And then they showed some gameplay, but it cut off just when it was getting good. And then, oh, no, no, it's going to be great, going to be great, going to be great. Then they did that disastrous VIP experience that they should have just called the closed beta. Or, or an open beta. Or no, close, well, yeah, invitational beta. It, it should have come from a place of humility. Guys, we know this is still rough. We need your help breaking it. Because gamers love that. Gamers love to help studios that they... It, it's one of the most giving communities I have ever seen in that regard. People will just... No, I, I love this. I want to make it good. Like, no, you don't have to pay me. You don't have to just, just let me play it first and, and let me be a part of it. I, I like this. This game saved my life kind of thing. Um... Instead of doing that, it was, no, it's VIP, and then it was a mess. And of course, it was going to be a mess. That's the purpose of betas. But they didn't do what, like, Red Dead Online, I mean, freaking Rockstar, the biggest assholes in gaming. They still managed to out-asshole Activision, and they still managed to come at the Red Dead Online beta as, guys, we know it's broken. Bear with us. Like, please tell us exactly how it's broken. And people were fine with it. But then, come launch, the game doesn't really seem ready to launch. And once again, Bioware needed more time. Um, they didn't push it back. They released a game that was broken, and it wasn't a soft launch. It was, we knew this, this date was coming for a while. Other people moved their games around to stay off Anthem. It's just, it just landed with a thud. There was no momentum. I think even if it was the greatest game, it wouldn't have had a good launch week. But then it would have seen like Dragon Age Origins, it would have picked up. Like the long-term sales of Dragon Age Origins were like, I haven't seen anything like that. I haven't seen anything like that since. Other than maybe Horizon Zero Dawn. But that did very well at launch. Um, but Origins just, just grew, right? Because it was word of mouth. People didn't know very much about it at the time RPGs weren't cool then and then it just more and more and more and more and more people are like oh my god this game's amazing and it didn't have good graphics and it didn't have the best combat and it didn't have the best dungeon design what people fell in love with were the characters and the stories all the characters even if you didn't like a character at first you ended up like loving them by your fourth playthrough yeah I played through that game four times enchantment um and Anthem didn't have that. It wasn't story driven. It's not character driven. It's gameplay driven, which Bioware has never shown an ability to do any more than adequately. 
I'll say, apparently the combat in Andromeda was okay. I'll take people's word for it. It was apparently the best of the Mass Effect series. Unfortunately, that's not saying much. Uh, it took me 10 hours in the original Mass Effect to figure out how to play that game properly because you couldn't play it as a real-time shooter. They said you could, but you really couldn't. You had to use that. I keep calling it the VATS wheel because it's exactly like Fallout, but you had to use that. You had to slow it down. You had to plan your moves and basically do it quasi-turn-based. Once I got that, all right, now I can use biotics and all this other stuff and engineer skills, and it's cool. But we kept coming back to Mass Effect because we love the characters and we love the world, and I love the Alcor. <laughs> but more and more Mass Effect started feeling diluted, and Dragon Age Inquisition did not sing the way even Dragon Age 2 did for me in terms of characters. Um, the gameplay was objectively, I suppose, better, but it was too much like Skyrim and it was too repetitive. It was just big and bloated and I didn't really feel like it was meaningfully big. It wasn't Witcher 3 big where there's always something to do or Far Cry big where those games managed to feel alive in a way no other game franchise does. Far Cry is the opposite of a Bioware game. The story is practically irrelevant. The story is what you do with the game. Bioware is different. People want to be swept away by those stories. Now, I totally get that sometimes a development team has to cleanse their palate. They have to try to do something totally different so they can go back to doing what they do well, feeling like they got a break. Okay, you've done that now. Now, Andromeda has not been good. And, and you know, Anthem may get fixed and it may turn out to be a, a pretty decent game. But I don't know, like even the Old Republic got panned at the beginning. But I really think that that was more just subscription than anything like that. The Old Republic was a lot more playable at launch. Uh, at least I liked it. Um, there was still a, a viable single player experience there. It was just nobody wanted to pay for a subscription to play it. Um, once they went free to play, game did quite well. But uh, Bioware's got to get back to being Bioware. And I hope Bioware still knows how to do that. Because gaming is finally ready for what Bioware offers just as they seem to be losing confidence in the fact that people are going to want a Bioware game, not a Skyrim clone, not a Destiny clone, a Bioware game. Give me a Bioware game. Go back and play Mass Effect 2 and Dragon Age Origins 2. That's your Bioware game. Though, Do that. Just do that. They could just do over origins with a different cast and a different existential threat and people would be happy by this point they need an existential threat they need a sauron to get the same drama as origins did like you saved the whole freaking world at the end of origins saving one sort of city state doesn't have the same oomph Defeating one dark sorcerer really doesn't have the same oomph. And, and yeah, rushing Dragon Age 2 really put them on their heel for a few games. But Dragon Age 4 has just got to be amazing. Because most studios can survive one. You're lucky to survive two. They're not going to survive three. I'll leave it there. Uh, oh, my mouse stopped working. Oh, no. Okay, here we go. Help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Help us blow Momo's nose. Patreon.com slash Leanna K. Thanks for watching. Or if you want to do a one-time PayPal donation to help blow Momo's nose, um, it's in the description box below. Just go into PayPal. Use that email. But um bum bum All right. Thanks for watching.